अज़ुबिल्लाजीम बिस्मिल्लाम अल्लाम जी आया नू पखैर आ गले नीहा शुम में वश मले ओहाय गजाइमस गुठ मोगन ओलाह बोजोर प्रीवियत कई फ़हाल हल शुभ चतोरे अहलन वसाल मरहबा बूना मूचो ग्रासिया सोवियो भली के आया हैश गैल दिन एंड लेडीज एंड जेलमेन थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ट्यूनिंग इन टू पी टी वी वर्ल्ड यू डेफिनेटली वॉच यू वर्ल्ड दिस मॉर्निंग डॉक्स द वेरी फेंटेस्टिक सेंटिलेटिंग एक्जूबरेटिंग एंड द वेरी नॉलेजेबल Ms. Hajjo Sati and I happen to be Shahzad Hasan Khan, and we hope and pray that everybody out there is ready to kickstart their day with us. Hello, Hajjo. How are you doing today? Assalamualaikum. I am good. How are you? Absolutely perfect. Uh, hosh gal din. Hosh gal din. Hosh bol do. <laughs> hosh. Oh, hosh bol do. Hosh bol do. Okay. I have said that. I have uh, actually uh, bolified hosh gal din, and you know, in reply to that, she said hosh bol do. What does hosh bol do means, and what does hosh gal din so, means? Hosh Kaldin is basically a Turkish counterpart of saying welcome, okay. and in courtesy to, to that, like we say, "Waalaikum Assalam" when yeah. we say "Assalamu Alaikum." So right? hosh bol do. Yes, hosh wow, bol do. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for teaching me that as well. But first things first, you know, there's one thing which I wanted to kind of ask you mm -hmm. because just yesterday we were talking about it, and you said that you know that you know partially Turkish language as well. Yes, yes. And you learn Turkish language by watching their serials. Yes, yes. How did you do that? Because even I, I have tried doing that, but you know, you can catch up on one or two or three words. But right. you cannot really catch up on the language. So, so which language did you try? Well, I've tried uh, Arabic, and I know uh, a bit as well. And then I've tried Pashto, and I've know. Uh, um, right. I mean, I can speak Pashto. I can definitely communicate in Pashto. But other than that, you know, right. for learning from a drama serial, I think will be a little difficult for right. me. Right. Uh, so, uh, and uh, how frequently do you watch uh, these series? You know, to you know, in order to learn the language. Well, I don't really watch the series right. to learn the language. So I would rather be in conversation with somebody because I've right. always been interested right. and keen about learning other languages. Right. So what I would do is that I would pick up a guy or or a friend, and you know, he or right. she will actually always be in communication with me, and we would try to kind right. of communicate in that particular language which I want to learn, and that has right. always helped me. Right. Uh, so I binge watch a lot of Turkish dramas, and uh, you know I found out that there are a lot of similarities between our language and between their language. All right. And uh, same goes for Arabic too. Okay. And same goes for the Persian too, right? Because uh, I think we are all the Central Asian in that sense that we have a lot of influence of Central Asia in True. our language, in our customs, in our traditions. So it's not that difficult to learn because you know they say those Tushman, you know, which is also uh, in the Urdu too. Oh, yeah. Right? So we so so that means that even I know right. Turkish. Those Tushman, Hosh right. Kaldin, and Hosh Boldo, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And from here onwards, I'm never going to forget that as well. But uh, right. with that, let's get started with uh, the top stories we have for you. Ladies and gentlemen, obviously we've always made sure to kind of remember all of those people who've contributed to the uh, field of arts, or may yes. it be arts or not, but whoever has contributed right. towards a positive image of right. Pakistan, it's our sole responsibility to make sure that we remind you about the services which they have rendered for their motherland as well. Which is why today, ladies and gentlemen, it is the 28th death anniversary of the legendary Kabal uh, Ghulam Farid Sabri Sab, and is being observed today as well, with many of his fans and colleagues paying homage to his life and career. And he was born in uh, Rohtak, a village in the Indian Punjab, back in 1930, and migrated to Karachi after partition. He began training in Kavali under his father Inayat Sabri, who was also a renowned musician. The Kaval was just 16 when he delivered his first performance at the Urs of Mubarak Shah in Kalyana, India. And you know, after relocating to Karachi, Ghulam Farid and his brother Magbul got together and soon came to be known as the acclaimed Sabri brothers, who introduced a new raw side of Kabali in Pakistan. And that's something which I might have witnessed uh, quite later, but yeah. even till date, I think, for for example, my father or you know people from the generation of my father, they're still in love with the kind of Kabalis they had, and you know they would always have an influence and they would have an impact, you know, the way their Kabalis yeah. were. And you know, in addition to that, their careers took off soon after Ghulam Farid released his 1958 Kabali, "Mera Koi Nahi Hai Tere Siwa." Have you heard right, that? Right. Uh, I, I don't think so. I have, but I have heard his um, there rather uh, a very influential Kabali about you know how they explain you know the Islamic anecdotes and very inspiring. Shahzad. Exactly. And in addition to that, I think that you know uh, they were the first ones to come up with Taj Dare Haram as well. That's true. And uh, people are still in love with it, you know, because Atif Aslam did the redo in Coke Studio as well, and even that's being Loved, uh, globally, so thereafter the duo actually delivered success after success with Kavali such as "Mera Koi Nahi Hai Tere Sewa," "Bardo Joli," "Meri Ya Muhammad," and "Taj Dare Haram" are some of the most acclaimed right, Kavali. Right, right, and I think I've heard this "Bardo Joli," "Meri Ya Muhammad." Bardo Joli, "Meri Ya Muhammad." Very inspiring. Yeah.
All right, ladies right. and gentlemen. So please make sure that you, you know, while you're praying, please make sure that you remember Sabri uh, Saab as well in your uh, prayers. Right. And for all of those people who are not around, and, and we really need to do so, taking advantage of Ramadan, making sure that, you know, that right. Allah is going to, because the doors to the heaven are open. And for right. whatever we're going to ask for in the month of, holy month of Ramadan, ladies and gentlemen, I think we should actually ask for whatever we want in our lives. Let's ask for peace, let's ask for health, That's let's true. ask for wealth, let's ask for the betterment of our country, our right, nation, right. and for everybody around us. Right. And and also the you know beauty of Ramadan is that Allah, you know, magnifies our good deeds a lot, yep. right? And expunges us since that's why I think we should take full advantage of this man and you know incorporate all the good things, you know, that we should and, have. And to do so, you know, there's one more question which I actually had in mind before the uh, right. start of Ramadan as well, and that is that so majority of the times I might have done that as well and a lot of people do that as well. So mm -hmm. what we do is that while we speak in English, we would refer to it as Ramadan. Right. And right. when we refer to it in Urdu, we refer to it as Ramadan. So I was, I, I'm, and I'm always confused whether to go with Ramadan or Ramadan. So now you're going with Ramadan. So I think I'll go with Ramadan as well, you know, because yeah, that's because how we pronounce it. And the spirit remains the same, you know, whether you say Ramadan <laughs> or Ramadan doesn't matter anymore. Right? Exactly, that's right. true. So which is why, ladies and gentlemen, right. moving on, there are a lot of people who are right. actually making sure that they are going to bring about a difference and a change and that to a positive right. one when we talk about, for example, the flora and fauna around us. Right. And when we and talk about River Indus in particular, and we've actually done a show with Mr. Vajahad Malik, right. who actually went on the right. Indus River expedition right. just a few days ago. And since PTV World uh, has signed right. a memorandum of understanding Ooh, nice. with Mr. Vajahad Malik. So here's the update, ladies and gentlemen. So Mr. Vajahad Malik, a famous and an adventure travel filmmaker, has initiated the expedition, which would be Pakistan's first ever full-length rafting expedition of the Indus River. Vajah said that his expedition would be a landmark not only in terms of natural conservation, but also in identifying his sustainable tourism sites along the path of the river. They have reached Kardu and will do rafting from Kharmang to Karachi. And that's quite, quite a lot of distance. And, you know, that can be a little dangerous too as well. Vajah, bhai, please make sure to be safe wherever you may probably be. And, and you know, the core reason or the sole reason behind right. his journey is that because the United Nations recognizes Indus River as a species, Right. And that, you know, for everybody right. who's, who's a part of that ecosystem within right. the Indus River, it really needs to be protected. And, and now there's, a, you know, movement within the world that such kind of rivers are given uh, rights, you know, yes, like yes, humans yes. are given the yes, rights. Yes. And that's because we want to cl combat the climate change, right? Exactly. Because and in addition to that, so, you know, for example, whatever way the Indus River might look right now, right. it should actually look the same way probably that's 20 true. years or 50 years that's down true. the line. That's so what they're doing is that they will be going around, they'll be shooting and then they'll be obviously capturing right. a lot of pictures so that God forbid if there's any right. change, you know, people can actually yeah. realize that there's a book, uh, you know, shelf life for those pictures right. so that anybody can come and probably see that, okay, within the past, how the Indus River has looked right. and now over the years, how does it really look? Right. And it also, it's a very essential part of a national identity, right? The Indus exactly. River. And I, I think we are the predecessor of some very great civilizations that world have produced. Exactly. And in addition to that, now moving on, ladies and gentlemen, where how, you know, in Ramadan, it's always a, a sunnah to open your fast with uh, right. a date. Right. And before that, I'm sorry, I'm cutting you, Shahzad. I would like to give my dose of a usual uh, literature and okay. I would uh, like to recommend a book, right? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so I would like to recommend a book which is actually a translation from a Turkish literature. <laughs> once it's again. Called, yes, once yes. again. My obsession with the Turkey and the Turkish literature. It's called uh, Time Regulation Institute by Ahmad Tantinar. All right. Right. Um, so uh, it has a lot of characters, but two main characters are Hairi Irdal. Yes. And the other one is um, uh, sorry, it's I It's all right, take your time. <laughs> right. So, Hairi Erdal, you know, uh, is suffering the vicissitudes of the faiths. You know, he doesn't have a job, you know, and he is also suffering, you know, from his relatives who are very harsh on him until he meets his benefactor, who's also a very shrewd personality, right? And uh, he lands him at a job and he makes a bureaucratic institution called uh, Time Regulation Institute, you know, all which right. is a very absurd part, you know, that give him a sense Time of purpose. Time Regulation Institute. Right, well, I think right. we should have it. <laughs> and the stated goal of that is synchronizing the time and the watches and, and making it synchronized with the Western time. All right. right. And so those who have uh, went to the lit uh, sorry Turkey and Istanbul, they might have seen that there's a friend of East and the West. There yes, yes, yes. Of the modernity and of the you know tradition, the Ottoman. Of the Muslim the tradition as well. Yeah. Right, right, right. 
Um, and uh, he says, uh, and I would like to quote here because I think it's a very powerful quote. Um, uh, Hairi Adal says that, you know, uh, we don't seem to be engaged in a very meaningful activity. And his benefactor's name is IRG, and he's a very shrewd personality. And he says, what do you mean by meaningful? Our meanings we share are not plucked from the air at the moment's notice. Right, so it's a book about um, the mechanization, about the bureaucratization, about the manipulative and a very self-serving relation with uh, the reality, with the social reality. And I think that is one of the um, uh, consequence of the modernization, exactly. right? Exactly, that is, that is. And in addition to that, you know, this is something which we have actually spoken right. about as well, that how we really need to recognize to find a resolve as well. Right. And that truly depicts that picture as well. Right. And thank you very much for sharing that. Is right. there more to that? No, that, that's Because it. you know what, we, she actually shared shared the very para uh, with me in my uh, WhatsApp group as well. And then while I was reading about it, I was like, hey, you know what? I'm just unable to comprehend it. And it might be probably because of the fact that I didn't know what, what has happened before and what's going to happen after as well. But, you know, I think that was a very strong message. Thank right. you very much for doing that as well. So now coming back to where, how in Ramadan we actually open our fast uh, right. with a date because it's a sunnah, ladies and gentlemen. Right. And even usually whenever... I'm going right. to the gym, I would uh, rather make this choice uh, intentionally that I would right. have two bananas or two dates. Right. And it just gives you Energy, this, this yeah. feeling of being healthy. And right. I don't know whether it has that impact or not, but ladies and gentlemen, right. to be very honest, to figure that out, what we did was that we've actually kind of put in a lot of research in making sure that what benefits do dates actually hold for all right. of us as well. So let's go, let's take a look. Khujur hum kyun khate I am aap ko dikhate Dates, a symbol of abundance and rich source of fiber, potassium and calcium, have been the stable food for Ramadan tables ever since Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, advised fellow Muslims to break their fasts with a sacred fruit. Besides being delicious, dates are truly a remedial reserve, especially when it comes to fasting. Thanks to their high carbohydrate content that peaks a lot of energy in such a small volume, they help to quickly renew empty carbohydrate stores suppressed sugar cravings and thus help you to control your appetite throughout the day. High in bodybuilding amino acids, vitamin A, B and C as well as many minerals such as potassium, magnesium, calcium, sodium, iron, zinc, copper and selenium. Dates are truly a powerhouse of nutrients. Now let's look at the benefits of dates. Dates are extremely helpful especially in Ramadan as they support immunity, good for the heart, protect against eye diseases, nervous system and energy, key for strong bones. Pakistan is the only country in South Asia which grows dates on a commercial scale. Date production in Pakistan ranks third in fruits and same is the case in case of exports. When we study the nutritional facts and the health benefits of this amazing fruit from the date palm, we will realize that it is indeed a must-have fruit after fasting for hours in Ramadan as well as in other months. Anas bin Malik narrated, the Messenger of Allah would break the fast with fresh dates before performing Salat. If there were no fresh dates, then he would break the fast with dried dates. And if there were no dried dates, then he would take a few sips of water. Dates, a symbol of abundance and rich source of fiber, potassium. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so these were the benefits of dates. And please make sure that you right. consume two or three, right? right? Yeah, because first of all, obviously it's Sunnah. Right. And second, obviously, it has got a lot of dietary benefits. And uh, it's yeah, an I think energy everybody booster, should have it. Right? It is an energy yeah. booster. And in addition to that, you know, there's so Very much dating. variety available yes. these days. Yes. So, you know, there's, there's one which comes with malai, there's one which comes with almonds, there's right. one which comes with cashew nuts as well. And right. it's just fabulous. Right. So, you know, and I've always loved the ones with um, almonds with and cream. cashew nuts uh, right. in it. But unfortunately, whenever I'm back home, and if right. God forbid, you know, we had some at our place. Ladies and gentlemen, I won't be uh, getting a chance to right. get a few because they're already finished. Right. So everybody uh, kind of loves them as well. Now, Hajra, right. we're going to come down to where how uh, it is, Alhamdulillah, the first Ashra, and we refer to it as Rahmat. Right. And, um, you know, so there's obviously a dedicated prayer for that, which uh, actually is, Rabbi Khair Warham Wan Tahiru Rahimin. And that's something which we want to kind of build up on right. today. Right. That, okay, you know, so Allah tells us, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells right. us right. that right. the first Ashra is Rahmat. Right. But how do we utilize this Ashra to get that Rahmat is something right. which we would want to kind of uh, delve into, right. or delve into as right. well. So, ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, we're very lucky that we've been joined by a religious scholar over here in the PTV World Studios, and he happens to be Mr. Imran Sandhu. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Right. Uh, so, sir, I would like to ask you, you know, why there is a bifurcation of three ashras in Ramadan? Can you please deliberate upon that? That's a wonderful question. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, uh, according to a hadith, uh, one of, uh, the, there are three ashras in Ramadan. The first ashra is Rahmat right. or mercy. Right. The second ashra is Maghfirat. Right. That is uh, uh, forgiveness from Allah. And the third ashra is uh, 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 nijat from hellfire. Right. So, uh, so the these the the reason why the ashr this ashra has been divided into three uh, this Ramadan has been di divided into three ashras is because uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants to wants to first enter a human being into His mercy. Right. Unless or until one uh, a person is entered into mercy. It, it is not possible to enter into uh, the forgiveness. Yeah. So first thing is Ask the mercy. mercy. So it opens the door of Ramadan with mercy. Right. And then when one opens the door, uh, the building inside gives you an environment where you can get forgiveness from Allah. As soon as you, you are forgiven of your previous sins in the first 20 days, right. the last ashra is our destiny. That is uh, nijat from hellfire or right. sa savior from hellfire. Right. So, uh, so in other words, uh, Ram the month of Ramadan has three attributes. One is right. mercy, one is forgiveness, and one is the destiny that right. is going to the Jannah. Right. right. Exactly. So, you know, let's let's get started with that. So, how do we capitalize on you know these bifurcated ashras uh, in the holy month of Ramadan. For example, first up is Ramad. So mm -hmm. you know there's always a way to seek for mercy. There's always a way to seek for forgiveness. There's always a way to pray to Allah Almighty. And you know, for example, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to pray to Allah Almighty, mm -hmm. he would always pray three times. You know, if it's a prayer, for example, Allah Miya Sayyid, so you know Allah Miya Sayyid, Allah Miya Sayyid. So right. it's like three times. So how do we make sure that you know we are capitalizing on that? Mercy wala ashra, so that we can actually get towards forgiveness and then towards destiny, which is heaven. So it's an interesting terminology that you are using, the capitalization. So I hope uh, that, that I think you mean when you say capitalization, you mean take full advantage of it. Yeah, that the real uh, the real uh, wealth of of a Muslim is doing amal. True. Is doing doing uh, taking actions when when they and and getting the reward of that. And you're coming back stronger. Wow, that's wonderful. So how do we get that reward? So so the first thing is look, uh, Ramadan is a, when Shaban used to come. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to start uh, preparing for Ramadan. And now that we have entered into Ramadan, and th the preparation would be, uh, you know, this, this this Ramadan is the month of Quran. So the first thing that m we should tr try to transform ourselves habitually is to start reading Quran. Right, right. The Quran is the true source of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Allah says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Mm -hmm. so, so the first, why, why Allah is, uh, 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 all the attributes are for Allah because He's Ar-Rahman. And what are the attributes? Uh, he's Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And uh, and 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 th the same connotation goes with mercy so he's because he's ra uh, it comes from rahma so the first thing that we would we would sh we should do in ramadan is try to be uh, try to forgive everyone or wh wherever we we are not uh, uh, like we have fought with someone or we are not in good terms with someone so the first thing is forgiveness of those people who we, we should forgive them and we should seek for, for, for forgiveness from them as well. Right. So this is how it is going to be. You, you should start practic practicing Sila Rahmi, right? And then uh, definitely, you know, after starting to read Quran in the, in the night and, you know, waking up in, in, in Tahajjud do, doing the Qiyamul Layl, you should also try to understand the meaning of Quran because in, in Ramadan, what happens is the 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 nafal amal or the uh, or the obligatory amal equates the 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 uh, in 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 reward in reward in front of Allah subhanahu wa taala it 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 equates the faraiz 
Right. Uh, or the the, the obligatory ones. The, uh, yeah, the 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 obligatory ones, and then uh, after that, the f the the uh, faraiz amal they actually become as strong as seventy uh, times uh, more. Seventy times more. Right. right. So this is how you want to get the first thing. Like you should go to you should start going to the mosque for five times. Uh, five times you should do it in normal days, b but yeah. you should right. try more and more to be on time. Mm -hmm. uh, do do the salah with takbir ula. Get get back and you know start uh, offering taravi. So these are the um, uh, th this is this is the ashraf cha changing habits as exactly. well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and sir, in addition to that, so no, I'm not actually going to uh, make a very generic statement. So mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about myself. Right. So usually what happens mm -hmm. is you know as a human, I would always make sure not to backbite. I would always right. make sure that I'm honest and transparent mm -hmm. within whatever uh, financial dealings mm -hmm. I'm into. I will always make sure that, you know, that if I'm feeling okay, you know, I would always right. love to welcome a lot of right. people as well. Right. But gradually, sir, what happens is that since we are humans and we do make mistakes, you know, so, I don't want to talk about it, but You know, something like right. that. And right. that would happen. That as a human, I, I have done that as well. And uh, I seek forgiveness from Allah Almighty. I would rather try not to do that right. but then eventually you know sir there's this thought which comes into my mind that okay you know if the shaitan is chained in the holy right. month of ramadan why do i keep repeating all of those mistakes which i certainly do not want to right. and and no matter what happens you know one way or the other i'll just commit it and and god forbid you know may it be probably just abusing somebody or probably uh, you know just talking about somebody on their backs as well so so how do we kind of get to that state where we stop sinning you know, right. that's, that's one thing. So that we can actually accept that rahmat too. Because the rahmat needs right. to come to us, right? right? And we want it. And Allah is saying, hey, you know what? Come, get the rahmat. But we cannot get it because right. we're still committing those sins. Right. Yeah. Uh, have you ever heard of those uh, terms in physics, momentum and inertia? <laughs> yes, yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually what is happening. You know, uh, all the 11th months, shaitan is uh, there to, you know, Socially condition us <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the right, right word my sister is using, right. conditioning. Yes. He's already done, done uh, you know. Quite a lot. Uh, lots of conditioning upon you and right. you you go into kind of a inertia and then, you know, right. this momentum of of uh, ad adopting, you know, bad habits or wrong habits or right. uh, so, so this is what happens when sh uh, even then when shaitan is changed the nafs is there yeah. right. and the nafs that wi with bad habits so right. so what happens in ramadan is actually it's a where it's a hard stop and a right. cut off date as well you know let's use some some terms that are very m known to you know financial people so the cut off <laughs> date is cut off date right. is that as soon as ramadan comes in right. you then you what you have to do is you have to change your habits of even even stopping the halal things that Allah Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala right. has made halal for you. True, true, right. And when you sto sto start stop taking halal things as well during right. the du during the, the time of s from sunrise Fast. to sunset, that is uh, from s from suhoor to, to aftar, uh, there's, a, th th there's a good opportunity for you to change other habits as well true. because they are initially th th these were halal and you you are not taking and those haram things or th those uh, you know no, uh, bad habits that we, we have adopted during the year we can it's a good opportunity to stop those habits with th these habits as well and on a very lighter note you know so there's this one bad habit which i would want to right. share with our audiences which i really want to kill and that is that you know sir whatever uh, fritters and you know uh, pakoras and samosa and kachoris right. we get in aftar right. Right. Uh, you know i have this habit of that you know while i'm actually about to go to bed and sleep i will right. have some more as well right. you know and i and yeah. no matter what happens i'll still have it you know so right. probably just while i'm going to the bed i'll just just like that go to the fridge open it up because for whatever is too strong for whatever <laughs> sandwiches are there for whatever right. drinks are there left over from the right. iftar i'll be like hey, okay let me have some and then right. i'll go to the bed and that's exactly what i did just yesterday as well <laughs> and i don't like it i even had a chocolate cake <laughs> <laughs> i don't know whether we should talk about it okay. while we are fasting but let's move on right. now sir coming towards while we're talking about rahmat and how we are conditioned right. Right. and obviously you know we have done this show mm -hmm. right before the start of Ramadan as well and where you said that okay you know we should actually fast a day or two as well before the start of Ramadan mm -hmm. so that we start to condition ourselves it's wonderful okay so 
because and this is something which I hope for because Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah is uh, Rahman Rahim. Mm -hmm. So we certainly do not think that when we've spoken about it just yesterday that you really need to have some sort of self-confidence that, okay, you know, as a Muslim, I'm trying to be better every single day. It's mm -hmm. good. Right. But now there comes a stage, sir, when we, God forbid, lose all our good amals by just kind of judging somebody because of the fact that we think that we are better Muslims. Right. How do you think that we can still attain Rahmat while we're thinking about that, hey, you know what, your deeds, are actually not better than mine. You know, I'm a better Muslim. So that comparison, when it comes into your mind, that's where you start to lose it all. Is it true or not? So the you are talking about the value system that uh, we should we, we should make ourselves habitual on. True. You know, there are two things. One is the value system of Islam, and then the other is the synergistic system of Islam. <laughs> yeah. So synergies and values. So, s the values, the core values of Islam is, the value is peace. Yeah. And peace, and the second core value is, uh, is faith. Okay. So, when we translate it into Arabic, it, it is Islam and Iman. Right. So, what is Iman? Tranquility from within. And what is Islam? It is the set of rules and regulations that we follow. So as soon as you know y your iman starts evolving and you know coming into your heart, what will happen is the amal or the action or the synergies will start appearing on your deeds. True. Right. So this I this is the translation. R what we can do is you know uh, why is is roza farz upon you or it is obligatory mm -hmm. upon you is because I it will it will create taqwa inside of you. And taqwa is not uh, not merely you know how you look mm -hmm. when you dress up. Mm -hmm. True. It is how you behave when you meet the yeah. people. So the behavior is actually, and the behavior should be be, be the, the core value that Islam tells you is to be truthful to yourself right. and to to the people around you. And what is truth? This is a very very complicated thing. One needs to understand. You need to know the truth about yourself, yeah. and you need to understand the truth tru truth about the society. Right. So when you I interact with the society, the real thing, the real truth is uh, th that the human should adopt is humility, right. not the kabur or pride. Right. Allah does not li like pride. So so, so th you have to stand by the truth, and truth is humility. And this is what actually Ramadan, Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, can bring upon you if you if you start ad adopting taqwa or the uh, God consciousness. So, so, so then uh, you know the humility comes with God consciousness. Right. The more you are conscious about that, Allah is watching you. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, in your ibadah, in right. in everything, and uh, you know Ramadan is a very very good month to practice uh, God consciousness yeah. because nobody is watching you. Right. You exactly. can go and Other eat in your go, go room, but you you, right. you you are refraining from from all the halal things. Right. Right. So you know it will bring in humility as well as taqwa. So you know I I would certainly want to wrap it up with this one as well because this is something which I kind of was reading just yesterday as well, and it said that the true disability is the inability to respect the differences, and I think that's that's right. where we all really need to kind of understand because where you spoke about truth. I think my truth will always be different from your right. truth as well. And this is something which we really need to respect. I think where we kind of get into aggression and arguments is where we certainly do not agree right. to disagree or disagree to agree. I think that's something which we really need to kind of focus on and emphasize on as humans because a gentleman who's got taqwa is, and taqwa needs to be portrayed in your personality. And it's because of the fact that I'm going to respect you for whatever views you have about the society, the political views, or whatever views. I really right. need to respect them, being a good person, being a good human, and on top of that, being a good Muslim. And that's right. it. You know, life will still go on. Why do we have to impose what we right. think onto somebody else? I think that's it. Right. It makes it simpler. Uh, yes, definitely. You know, uh, as Quran says, La ikraha fid deen. You know, lakum deen, ukum wali deen. So, so y uh, you don't need to impose anything upon anyone. True. And when you don't impose, the second thing you want to do is whenever you talk to someone, somebody, someone who, d who you disagree with, you have to be logical. You True. should talk with the, with the with some facts and figures. armor of logic, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
not with the uh, with uh, stick in your hand or, or, or stick on your face even. Exactly or not you just know? that sir because you know be speaking louder does not mean that you are saying the truth you know so that is yeah. one thing which I have always understood and people, in my life. And people who would who, who, who try to impose their personality or boss around or uh, you know be, be bully someone they lack uh, they would normally lack knowledge. Exactly. You know, when you, you when you lack knowledge, you try to behave in a way that you you are right, even though if you are wrong. Exactly. So so here comes another thing. Allah says, "Iqra bismi Rabbikal The first ever communication with Prophet Muhammad was Iqra, and Iqra bismi Rabbikal We should start reciting Quran with the name of of the Rabb. True. So that you, it reminds us, you know, this is the true essence of this whole of this universe is acquiring knowledge and then acquiring uh, and not only see acquiring knowledge, mm -hmm. but acquiring with a lens of uh, of the takhliq, why, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this whole universe. The, the, the reason Allah made this universe is, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created man but to submit to my, my ibadah mm -hmm. or my, uh, to become my slave. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, the objective of, object, objective of this universe is to for one to see why this universe was created. Yeah. You know, the stars, That's the, where moon, you find your the purpose. sun and the whole of the kainat. True. Right. Thank you very much, Sandhu Saab, for being with us. Lovely to be in conversation with you and that too when it's backed with logic and knowledge. I think that's why we love you the most as well. And in addition to that, I'm going to request you that in the coming weeks, please make sure that you bring along your sons and daughter as well because they are great Nathwans as well and we would certainly want to kind of get that feel as well. Thank you very much once again for being with us and for everybody who's out there. Ladies and gentlemen, all you need to do is just kind of recite Rabbi Khair Warham Wan Khair Rahimin. We're actually heading out towards a short break. Once you guys will come back, we're talking about moral values as well. You know, how do we define moral values is something I would want to start with. Let's see who's going to be in the studios with us to talk about moral values. He's one of the best as well. Good morning. وبارك وسلم
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Hosh Galdin, Hosh Boldo. And uh, as we mentioned before heading out towards a short break, that now we will definitely be talking about moral values right. and how you kind of condition or how your parents condition your, your very own uh, yeah. existence to make sure that, you know, that you're just abiding by all of those moral values which have yeah. transcended from generations. I don't know whether, you know, moral values should transcend because I think morals should really be updated yeah, every other day as well. Right. But to get started, ladies and gentlemen, why lucky he happens to be one of my professors in my university days as well. Alhamdulillah, he was very young even then. I think he was right. probably my age uh, while we were in our university as well, but he's always going to make sense. He's a motivation speaker himself. Whoever he surrounds, ladies and gentlemen, around him is truly inspired and they draw inspiration from him. He, ladies right. and gentlemen, happens to be Mr. Asif Rasool. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good Wa morning. Assalam. Sir, how are you? Allah karam. Thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful to have you over here. And to get Thank started, you. sir, moral values. And, um, you know, so our moral values are obviously just according to the, to the very thought process of our parents. And they're according to their parents. And, and, that, yeah. and that's how we have right. kind of progressed or digressed as well, you know, if that's the right term. <laughs> So how do you think that we define moral values, the very genre of moral values? What are moral values? Uh, are we going to relate it with Ramazan or uh, out of this context? I mean, both so, of it. Let's, okay. let's just be good humans today. Okay, all right, fine. Uh, I mean, first, when we just think of this, this uh, specific moment, so Allah Almighty, who is the creator of the universe, he has not only created the best of the best human, uh, but he has also uh, provided us with the proper SOPs for that. Uh, being a Muslim. True. So when I was growing up, it, it's a very thought-provoking question which you have asked because what I got in moral values, that was half-cooked. That was not relevant even to the Islamic culture because right. they were like people were, my grandfather was having a different ideology. For example, yeah, yeah. Uh, to tell you one very interesting thing, whenever people from Tabligh Jamaat came to our mosque in my village, my grandfather was the first one. He said, come on. Never talk to them. They're just wasting time. Okay. They're not taking... I mean, this is what I grew up with. Right. And now after joining university, so I am going to strike on that. Okay. I love Allah Tarek Jabi. I right. listen to him. So, I mean, this right. is all. As yes. you were rightly saying that uh, we just change. We listen because perhaps people now, due to this social media, due to this uh, technology, right. uh, youngsters, they have got multiple opportunities to listen to the scholars. When I grew up, I did not listen to the scholars. I am basically a product of simple Malvis, hmm. who were perhaps very good at recitation of Holy Quran. Right. Uh, they knew a few speakers. things, right. and they were very nice. But uh, I, I didn't listen to scholars. Okay. But now, uh, right. thanks to this technology, I've got uh, people from different brands, uh, Molanas, and I listen to them. Wonderful. I understand it. So it helps me a lot to hit on the previous like uh, established truths, what I, I, I just developed in my perceptual world because of my grandfather, because of my father, and because of that environment where I was. Yeah. So it, 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 it keeps changing. Now people listen to it, people are changing, people are developing. So now we have got like uh, even many, they are controversial, I'm not going to mention their name here, but they appeal youngsters very much True. because they challenge their established truths and uh, the status quo, which these P's, Molanas, they have got, they have challenged, and now they are asking such questions uh, for which they are not prepared. True. And th this is like one uh, we are challenging, and now we have got to develop uh, a lot, many perspectives. Relating it with this, uh, this specific month, you know, Allah Almighty has just provided us with a specific kind of environment. You know, the moment this month starts, yeah, the feeling is different. My father was uh, Shazad, first one. He was there, and he said that well. Uh, in normal days, normally uh, I don't ask you, but no, this is a special month. Uh, you must offer prayer, yeah. and this is what. Then you just read the basic gist is knowing. You exactly know the crux of this month, and then you get to know like uh, many SOPs that, which we have got to develop. Uh, uh, talking about these ethics and after that you just uh, you just get the proper environment just like a gym you know the way a, uh, a, a you go to gym you've got all people all around you and you just get yeah, very motivated yeah. and all and similarly we have got the proper environment where everybody is conscious about uh, this uh, this uh, fasting everybody is conscious of offering prayers everybody is there to uh, take care of the people to serve people uh, to have a, patience a, a, a very simple question so do you think that morals can be drawn from religion or society or uh, both? Uh, basically, it's uh, obviously first from your religion, you get this. 
but then uh, what the society is doing. Uh, unfortunately, in this current scenario, I mean, all the typical example which we have got, I mean, they're not following. Sir, uh, what, what we get from uh, from religion is for nafal and sunnah. Yeah, you know, these are the three things which we get from our religion. Right. Where do you think moral comes from? I mean, this is a very simple question, and because morals have been modified, and you know, morals have been changed, and you know, with the advent of time and passage of time, we have seen that things have changed. And this, in the today's time, what we see is the philosophy of morals is that you know that you really need to first of all unlearn what you've learned before and then you know keep on learning which right. you think is going to be better for you and for the people around you exactly it's kind of like evolution it it, it keeps changing and we have got intellectuals uh, islamic scholars are there and then we got like uh, people from different walks of life i have never seen they islamic share. islamic scholars modifying their behaviors or probably adopting to newer morals you know they would always speak about what they have learned from the holy book of quran and 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 then or probably you know from the prophet's life and that's something which is done but you know when with the passage of time we talk about evolution we really need to kind of talk about for example you mentioned about Mulana Tariq Jibril sahib would talk about dr israr sahib as well right. where they've always made sure how to incorporate the modern technologies or the modern knowledge or the modern education right. so that we are better humans every single day rather than just sticking to what we have learned probably decades ago right i think ashizad also important is that you know uh, we need to diversify our view of islamic scholars True. for example i considered alama iqbal Wonderful. as an islamic scholar he is he is and and yes and he gave a very important you know redefinition of you know what are islamic moral values should be while incorporating at the same time the enlightenment yes. values right yes and he was inspired by a lot of other people like sir sayed ahmed khan True. like and they would um, always speak about it right right and the very consciously but so how do we do that same is happening in our, right. in our society as well right. you know, for example uh, we have got this current status quo yeah. uh, people who are like uh, from these uh, different family tradition the right. dynasties of peace right. uh, now whoever is there currently heading that uh, dynasty uh, they are not there to answer these questions okay. which the youngsters are right. asking because now they have developed they have got the knowledge from various fields yeah. right. and one of my uh, best friend he was my class fellow at school kashif he is working uh, serving in one of the government institution and he told me that look i went through the holy quran i have just got like full fledged knowledge about it and i invite all the officers in my house and i my job is just to educate them because these traditional guys yeah uh, when we have got to preach all over the world, when we have got to tell the true essence of Islam right. or uh, the way, uh, in especially in 20, application in the 21st century, right. uh, traditional Mawlanas are not there <laughs> to answer that. Right. And so that's why I said we are going for it. <laughs> and for this, we need, uh, you are and right, and I and fully and agree and with that. And it. that's where the concept of, you know, taqlid and ijtihad also come into focus. Oh, exactly. Right? 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 Because taqlid means blindly following something, right? And ijtihad means like, which Alam Iqbal emphasized it, you know, that we need to seek the answers For of the modern. For ourselves as well. Right. The solutions of the modern problems of the 21st century. But unfortunately, um, this, right. this we, we've got like right. typical uh, example here. Uh, did you ever see even a single uh, venue or gathering where we've got Maulanas from all streams, they sit together and they say that, well, we are in Pakistan or we are just talking about Muslim Ummah. Right. And according to 21st century, now we have got to go for this like in their own capacity they are working in the best possible you know what manner. The, sir, but this is very unfortunate that the relics cannot get together on on right. to a single platform and right. you know it might be probably because of the fact that their belief systems are different and they vary right. and we should give them that liberty as well it's their choice right. but towards right. the end of the day my religion is my responsibility it's not the responsibility of any molana out there to kind of guide me through but obviously we need to see guidance the right. only problem exists where we do not refer to the Sunnah of Prophet right. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right. 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 or to the Holy Book Quran. Rather, what we do is we open up YouTube and be like, okay, ji, aao ji, bihan sun lete hain So now, for somebody who does not have the basic knowledge of their own religion, right. imagine so somebody telling them. Obviously, they will actually venture into taklid, where you actually mentioned it very that's correctly, and that's right. where Lama Muhammad Iqbal Sahib very rightly mentioned that Definitely. we really need to have the it's modern the solutions right. Right? right so now coming towards you know because we we're very short on time as well how do you think that 
you know, for the future generations. For example, Alhamdulillah, I have three lovely daughters. How do I treat them? Because, right. sir, let me give you an example. We go back in time, you know, probably 18th century, you know, we have seen within the, the subcontinent, the women weren't empowered. You know, they weren't allowed to work. And, you know, there was a lot of pressure. There was a lot of responsibility right. onto them. But we have seen that uh, transitioned into where, Alhamdulillah, Haja sits right next to me and we do a program. We make right. sure that we voice our concerns and mm -hmm. we share our knowledge equally and that we are paid equally and that we have equal rights and that's wonderful to see and even our religion has told us that you know prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his life has done that you know he would and race with his wife right. as well and you know he would always make sure and, to give that pr priority and, and adding to the conversation shahzad you know if you uh, i mean recall the ancient history of islam uh, you would always you know recount such kind of anecdotes where hazrat aisha would actually go to the mosque you know yes. can you imagine you know some woman going to the mosque in in you know today's environment i don't think so um, and she would actually you know lecture people and she would actually you know propagate holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's teachings you know so that sort of moral values were there um, so now talking about uh, today's um, I think environment of the Ramazan and our social moods uh, especially you know when you see that the when the uh, time of iftar comes near we see people are rushing on the roads and you know they want to uh, I mean get their things and you know uh, <laughs> uh, often they would get in conflict with each other and start and breaking red lights yeah you know, that's they, true, they that's, do not even stop that's for true. traffic lights you know you're fasting what's the point of fasting right. if you cannot even stop on your street right. light Exactly, and, and this is very antithetical to the very basic tenet of Ramadan, which is tolerance, right? Yeah. Um, and, and also, we talked about how we are, you know, emotionally conditioned like that, right? So, how to break such kind of habit, uh, sir, I would like to ask. Karaji, one is <coughs> getting the crux uh, exactly. Right. I mean, if you are clear right. why you are going for this, one is that you take it as a ritual. Right. Uh, that other people are fasting, so I'm also going to fast. Right. I don't know the exact background behind this. So if people are going to listen to it and if right. people <coughs> exactly understand the essence, right. then when it comes to uh, acting upon them, it gets very easy. And there are so many like challenging times. Yeah. You'll be able to stand with the trial if you understand the theory behind it. And if you do not understand, and then second, unfortunately, like now, what is happening uh, in Rawalpindi in Islamabad, like uh, youngsters, I, I mean, they spend the whole night uh, playing, yeah. going here and there. And obviously, when they're going to wake up early in the morning, they've got to get to the university, they've got to perform. Do you think that they'll be able to do it? <laughs> I mean, this is not the, 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 the proper time. So, I mean, uh, the, the, the thing is, uh, we have got to exactly understand the essence. Mm -hmm. uh, of this and after that when we start uh, implementing it or when we start acting on it we'll be able to do it in the best possible way without understanding the essence of it I mean it's a ritual somebody else is performing I may not understand the essence of that so obviously when there, there's a trial there's an issue there's a problem I won't be able to stand by it exactly so you know there needs to be true understanding behind that as well but thank right. you very much sir for being with us it was lovely to be in conversation with you and for everybody who's out there you know i have this simple message because i was heading back to uh, from the gym towards my home right before aftar and i could see that it was uh, havoc it was chaotic on roads as well and it actually felt like as if you know the way i used to kind of feed my uh, uh, you know dog you know a pet right. dog and he would start jumping and you know do whatever he <laughs> would want to do and i felt like as if you know god forbid we were behaving like that right. and there's only one thing which has which which has always been with me and that is that whatever you want in life start giving it to people if you want That's that space true. for yourself start That's giving true. it to people if you want money for yourself start sharing it with people start giving That's it to true. the people so agar aap kisi ko rasta denge aapko bhi allah zindagi mein kahin na kahin kisi mauke pe rasta zarur dega samjho please make sure that right. you live with the true essence of ramazan please make sure to do so Right, uh, so with this, I think that was a very good message of Thank the community you. service that, you know, Shahzad gave us. And with this, we end our show. And please write to us about the book that I recommended. You know, if anyone has read that, please uh, write about it. And because it feels lovely to be, you know, in conversation with you and to feel your presence and participation in this show. And with that, we are ending our show. And next uh, day, we'll come again with another episode and some very exciting topic. Inshallah. Inshallah, so till the next time, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure that you write to us on our Facebook page, which is with the name of World This Morning. On Twitter, it's World This Morning without a G. On Daily Motion on YouTube, it's World This Morning. The fabulous routine is going to be 5 past midnight. Till the next time, look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning.